Hey guys, Austin here from Foreigners Finances. Thanks for checking out my video today. Now today, I want to make Foreigners Finances a little more personal. I want to introduce an aspect of my money to your life, and I want to talk about credit cards. And specifically, I want to introduce you to my three credit cards. There's a couple reasons I want to do this. First, I want to be a little more open with you guys. I want you to learn from what I do with my money. I want you to learn from how I open accounts, why I open accounts, and why I do the things I do. Also, I want to show you that it's okay to make mistakes in personal finance. Um, I have three cards, and two of them I would have done things differently if I could go back and change them, but I can't. So, I'll introduce you to my cards today. First, I opened an account with Harris Bank in 2007, and I got a credit card from them. Harris Bank is a big bank in Chicago. They are actually my home bank where I keep my checking account. And my mom had me sign up for this account to start opening credit, to start getting my credit moving uh, when I was still in college. And this was a good idea at the time, and it still is, because this card is the longest standing credit card I have in my life, going on three years now. And as some of you may know, 15% of your credit score is credit history. So I try to keep this card active and going every couple of months so that I can keep this card in my credit history. Downside of this card, it doesn't really have any benefits to my financial life. There are no rewards, there's no points, there's no concierge service. So it's a very bare bones card, but it's something that is important to my financial life because it's keeping my credit history moving. The second card I opened up was in 2008, and I opened up the Discover card. Now at the time, I got suckered in by their points and their rewards program. But as soon as I got that card and after a couple of months, I found out that these points and rewards programs are impossible to figure out. There's too much going on. There's certain rewards you can get from January to April. There's certain rewards in the summer months. Gas is a certain month where retail shopping is another month. So I maybe got $25 in rewards, but is it really worth it with all of the worry and concern about do I need to buy gas this month or do I need to buy gas next month because next month I can get 5% but this month I can get 2%. It's a lot of work and it's not worth it. If I could go back I would close this card but my credit history is pretty thin as it is so I could try to keep this card active. My third card and my favorite card is my Charles Schwab Invest First credit card. I opened this card last year, card holder since 2009 and the reason I got this card was it gives me 2% back on all purchases. Some people will say, you know, you need to buy a card that, or you need to apply for a card that will give you points and rewards and money back in the category of spending that you spend the most time in. For example, if your family spends $500 a month at Target, you should probably apply for a Target credit card because they'll really work their rewards towards you and it'll make you save a lot of money at Target. The problem is, I don't spend a lot of money in a certain category. I got this card when I was still in college, and my biggest expense was groceries at Aldi, the discount food grocery store, but they don't even allow credit cards. So there was really no point in me getting a Target card or a Amazon card because I wouldn't spend enough in those categories to warrant the rewards that I was receiving. So I went with the Charles Schwab Invest First card, 2% back across the board. Everything is on sale. One concern about this card is that first you need to sign up for a brokerage account with Charles Schwab. This can be a little bit of a pain, but I still love this card. Every month at the end of the month I pay my bill and the 2% that I spend goes right into that brokerage account and they want you to buy stocks but I just transfer it out to my checking account and I'm good to go. It's a very good card and I would suggest it to anyone who doesn't spend a certain amount in each category. So those are my cards, the Harris Bank card from 2007, my longest standing credit card and something that keeps my credit history going. My Discover card that I opened in 2008 seemed like a good idea at the time but the rewards just aren't worth it. And the third card, Charles Schwab Invest First, 2% across the board, everything's on sale, they don't bug you. Their website is nice. I really enjoy Charles Schwab, and I would suggest them to almost anyone out there. So that's my credit card history. I hope you learned something from it today. If you're considering opening up a, a credit card in your life, I would definitely do some research. And if you ever have any concerns or questions, 
feel free to contact me, Austin, at foreignersfinances.com or leave a comment on this post below. So thanks for checking out the video and I hopefully we'll see you guys soon.